Hello everyone, my name is Victor Öhman and what you're seeing here is an environment I created last week. I got a lot of questions on how I made the snow, so I thought I'd make this short tutorial and show you. I made the tileable snow for the terrain in Quixel Mixer using two snow materials from the Megascans library. I'll be skimming through the mixer part, as the process itself is very straightforward, but if you want to learn more about the features of the mixer, head on over to Quixel's YouTube channel and check out the Quixel Mixer Workflow Primer. What I'm doing here is that I've loaded a clean snow material. I'm then adding a noise layer on top of it to get some large shapes going on. I'll then be blending a more dirty snow in the lower parts of the noise. I'll start off by lowering the saturation, and I'll then adjust the threshold to find the sweet spot for the blend. Next, I'll go ahead and lower the repetitions a bit. Let's go ahead and add some more visual fidelity to the material by adding a couple of atlases. I'll start off by adding some mulch. And I don't want this to completely take over the texture, so I'll blend it so that it's just visible. There we go. And I think it's very handy to toggle visibility on and off to compare changes I've made. You do this by clicking the eye icon next to the layers. I'll go ahead and add another tileable atlas. This time some larger branches. And just as before, I'll keep it very subtle to simulate snow having fallen on top of them. There we go. And once again, I am double checking the results by toggling the visibility. Let's go ahead and export this. Instead of exporting the textures, I'll use the export to library feature, which will save this mix as a material in my local library. This way I can access it both from the mixer and the bridge. In the custom tab in the bridge, I can then find and export it straight to Unreal Engine 4 by using the Live Link plugin. Once the textures have been imported, you'll find them in the custom surface folder. As you can see, it's automatically created a material instance with the textures hooked up as well. Let's go ahead and modify this by adding some subsurface to it. This is the master material the Live Link plugin created. All we have to do here really is to change the shading model to subsurface. I'll then multiply the albedo texture with a light blue color value and plug that into the subsurface input. There we go! Let's apply it to the ground and adjust the displacement to make the snow fluffy and nice. Megascans materials contain more detail than you might expect, and UE4 really helps them pop. Voila! And all I did here was to change the master material from the bridge to be subsurface shaded, and I boosted the displacement intensity. Next I want to show you a neat little thing you can do. Directionally apply the snow. This can be applied to anything really, but it works extremely well with snow, especially if you displace the snow as well. Let's take a look at how it's done. Here's a copied and modified version of the bridge master material. It might look complicated, but it's not really. Let's dive into it. The whole thing is driven by these seven nodes really. I'm using a vertex normal world space node to get the XYZ axis in RGB colors which I then mask using a component mask with only the blue channel checked, which is the up axis. You can mask things in from other directions by checking the other channels. I then added a power node and a constant, which I can use to control the contrast of the blend. What I then do is alert between a zero and a constant using the vertex normal info as the alpha. The constant allows me to control the intensity of the blend and LERP is short for Linear Interpolation. Before moving on, you should add a clamp, ensuring that the values never go below 0 and above 1. This collection of nodes now functions as a mask, which can drive the LERPs between the rock texture and the snow texture. I use the same snow texture here as on the terrain, ensuring they blend well. It's important to blend the displacement as well. In this case, I don't displace the rock itself, but only the snow. You can of course displace the whole thing if you want. The constant here with 0.5 as a value is a rock and the displacement texture in the yellow group is where my snow displacement map is. To displace the rock as well, just copy the nodes and swap the textures out. 
Here you can see how I'm blending between the two albedo textures. Right before the input, I just added a multiply to control the overall intensity of the albedo. And that's it! This material can be applied to other things as well, such as a fallen tree in the final render. Or as I'll show you now, scatter assets. I'll just load these in the foliage painter and paint them out, and regardless of their orientation, the snow will always be on top, ensuring that they blend nicely with the terrain. And that's how I made the snow! This was a really short video, and I really hope you learned something from it. If you want to see more videos like this one, please let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to get notified of new videos. Also, make sure to tune in to our Twitch channel Quixel Tools on Wednesdays at 11.30 am PST. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. This is Victor Oeman. Thank you.